So behind me is the results of the 2015 Butte fire, um, which burnt very intense in this particular area, really throughout the fire area. And the conditions that existed before this fire burnt are very similar to what we see really up and down the Sierra Nevada region. We've got many forests that are overgrown, they are unhealthy, they are susceptible to large damaging fires, they're susceptible to tree mortality, and the many benefits that they provide are really at risk. So the good news is we've got solutions. We know what works. Ecologically sound forest restoration is exactly what we need to be doing in these forests. Unfortunately, we're woefully underfunded. We have processes and policies that make getting these projects done time consuming and complicated. Um, so that's our challenge. So the projects you're about to see are examples of the kind of work we need to be doing, the exact kind of ecological restoration that's needed up and down the Sierra Nevada. Lily Gap is what we call a forest health project. We try to take out all of the brush, all of the uh, small trees, thin all the uh, unhealthy trees out and come up with a really healthy forest stand. It makes the trees a lot more resilient, they get a lot more water, they're a lot more resistant to disease. So this is the way the Sierra really needs to look, the way, what we've done here with Lily Gap. A project like this makes uh, for a much more open forest. You don't have a lot of small manzanita brush, you don't have a lot of small trees, and fires just don't take off like they would in a really crowded forest stand. When you have a lot of brush, the fire just explodes. They're very difficult to put out, very expensive and dangerous for firefighters. And that's what caused uh, a lot of the areas in the Butte Fire to really take off so uh, intensely because there was so much more brush on the ground. A thinner forest also is more resistant to uh, bugs. As you know, we have a real big bug kill problem in the Sierra Nevada. That's because with the drought, uh, the trees can't make the sap. There are too many trees per acre. The bugs can get in, they kill the trees. In a stand like this, the trees get more water, they can produce more sap, they're more resistant to the bugs, and you get a forest that survives. And like this one, it stays green where everything else is going brown. Prior to the Butte Fire, Calaveras Healthy Impact Product Solutions performed a wide variety of fuel reduction and forest restoration projects in Amador, Calaveras, and Alpine counties. Fuel reduction projects uh, done by Chips and others in this area helped stop the fire before it wiped out the towns of Glencoe, Wilseyville, and West Point. Where it didn't happen, the Butte Fire tore the landscape up and burned another 60,000 acres, including entire communities, hundreds of homes, and the entire forest burned along with the next ridge over. All around us, we see the, the forest dying, and yet in places that we've done restoration, we're making a difference. The tree mortality in, in the plantation behind me is, is actually at less than 2%, and that's pretty normal for a forest. Right across from me where we broke off our work, it's at a level of approximately 45%. So these are examples of projects that we know work to reduce tree mortality and to reduce the risk of large damaging fire. And these projects really protect the forest and the many benefits that all Californians get from the Sierra Nevada. This is why the Sierra Nevada Conservancy joined with the United States Forest Service and many other partners to launch the Sierra Nevada Watershed Improvement Program. It's an effort to increase investment and address the policy and process constraints that we face to restore these incredibly important watersheds. So to learn more about the Sierra Nevada Watershed Improvement Program, please visit RestoreTheSierra.org.